Boeing is a company with a long tradition, making history with the 747 in commercial aviation, the B-17 Flying Fortress in defense, the first stage of the Saturn V, and several modules of the ISS in the space sector. But since February 2020, the company has lost half of its value on the stock market and is now struggling with problems in crucial business areas. The COVID crisis has only played a part in this. The fact that Boeing, unlike most other defense contractors, didn't even benefit from the Russian invasion of Ukraine shows how deep the problems are. In this video, we want to shed some light on the background. Boeing's origins date to 1916, when the American timber merchant William E. Boeing, whose mother came from Vienna in Austria and whose father came from Germany, more precisely from Hohen Limburg in North Rhine-Westphalia, introduced the first aircraft to the public, the B&W, named after its designers William Boeing and George Conrad Westervelt. In 1918, the first crisis threatening the company's existence came with the end of World War I, as the US military flooded the market with used aircraft and orders for planes were cancelled. But instead of laying off employees, Boeing manufactured furniture. In addition, Germany was required to surrender all Fokker D7s, probably the best aircraft of their time, to the Allies, and Boeing benefited from the lessons learned. The rise of the company began in the 1920s with the airmail service, but in 1934 there was already the next crisis. First in February, President Franklin Roosevelt cancelled all airmail contracts and directed the US Army Air Corps to deliver the mail. However, as several accidents occurred in the following months and many US Army Air Corps pilots crashed, the Air Mail Act of 1934 was passed by the US Congress in June. This led to Boeing being split into three companies, creating United Airlines and United Aircraft Corporation, which later became UTC. Frustrated by this decision, the company's founder resigned as chairman in September 1934. On January the 17th, 1936, the prototype Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress crashed, yet the US Army Air Corps initially ordered 13 aircraft of this type. The next milestone was the Boeing Model 307 Stratoliner in July 1940, which was the first airplane with a pressurized cabin. Boeing produced several aircraft models for the American Armed Forces in World War II, and the already mentioned B-17 Flying Fortress, especially the B-29 Super Fortress. After the end of the war, Boeing went through a difficult phase once again. The Messerschmitt Me 262, which was introduced in April 1944, triggered the jet age. In 1956, founder William E. Boeing died of a heart attack aboard his yacht at 74. A year later, a new milestone was reached with the 707, not the first commercial jetliner in service, but it's often credited with beginning the jet age in the civilian sector. It also had sufficient range for a flight across the Atlantic. Another milestone was the 737, the first version of which made its maiden flight in April 1967, and Lufthansa became its first customer. In the meantime, this has become the best-selling passenger aircraft in history. But a short time later, the oil crisis of the 1970s again presented the company with major challenges. Pilots love their airplanes, and because of the control horn, they don't have any major problems to adapt to when they change from the co-pilot to the pilot seat. While on Airbus machines, they find the control stick on the co-pilot seat on the right side and the pilot side on the left. They have to get used to it. We can all relate to how strange it is at the beginning to use the other hand for a practiced activity. Furthermore, Boeing became successful by buying out several competitors, such as McDonnell Douglas, which developed, among others, the F-15, the F-18, and the Hughes helicopters, the Apache. In the space sector, they were also responsible for parts of the Saturn V, as well as the Skylab space station. However, mergers of this magnitude are not easy to manage, and the company culture changed permanently as a result. Since January 2020, the company has been headed by an accountant, Dave Calhoun. In addition, Boeing received $17 billion in federal loans from the US government in 2020, as these were classified as critical to maintaining national security. But how could this traditional company, which has already mastered numerous crises, go off the rails? 737 MAX The Boeing 737 MAX is the fourth generation of the Boeing 737 and the disasters of Lion Air Flight 610 and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 
whereby 346 people got killed, is the elephant in the room. As a result of these two accidents, the whole 737 MAX fleet was grounded between March 2019 and December 2020. Netflix aired Downfall, the case against Boeing, and YouTube showed Boeing's fatal flaw from PBS, two good documentaries about the 737 MAX disaster. As the 737 MAX revelations on the two tragic crashes have shown, an angle of attack AOA sensor error could have catastrophic consequences. In fact, such a single point of failure should not even exist, but this was the case with the 737 MAX, especially in conjunction with the MCAS stabilization system, which was supposed to intervene in the event of an impending stall and automatically move the elevator, thus pushing the nose of the aircraft down. But when this system was fed with the wrong sensor data, the pilots had no chance. Furthermore, it came out that integrity did not play a significant role with managers, and in the company culture, one even shifted the blame on the crashed pilots. They wanted to do something against the Airbus A320, Neo family, and took great risks. They even hid the existence of the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, MCAS, from the FAA and the customers. They wanted to avoid additional pilot training at all costs. In particular, the public appearances of the then CEO Dennis Muhlenberg left a sour taste in the mouth. As early as 2006, the company was considering a clean sheet design for a new version of the 737, which would have avoided many technical problems, including those caused by the new fuel saving, but also very bulky engines. But for financial reasons, the decision was made otherwise, and the existing design was exploited. Political engineering instead of the art of engineering. Boeing had to pay $2.5 billion in penalties and compensation for the 737 MAX disaster, a fraction of what Volkswagen had to pay for the diesel emission scandal in the USA. Boeing owes this partly to how American companies in the USA have to pay fewer penalties than foreign companies, but also to the fact that Boeing knows how to do political engineering. Nowadays, Boeing makes sure that it has production and development facilities in several US states while ensuring its suppliers come from as many different US states as possible. Furthermore, it moved its headquarters from Washington State to Chicago, Illinois. All this serves to get leverage over US politicians from different US states to be able to argue with jobs. But instead of optimizing its influence in Washington, Boeing should focus on making great products again. The art of engineering should be in the foreground. Bad deals. Boeing is part of the US military industrial complex, which is a master at using lobbying and political engineering to steer taxpayer money into its own pockets, usually. But Boeing has recently made a whole series of bad deals. In particular, the 2018 deal with then US President Trump to modify two 747s into the new Air Force One was a really bad deal for Boeing. Responsible managers would never have agreed to these. Restricted personnel selection. While many people with an immigrant background work in the American tech industry, especially at Blue Origin and SpaceX, Elon himself is from South Africa, a green card is enough for most positions there, but Boeing take a different approach. There are many jobs only for US citizens, since a security clearance is required for several positions. However, this has the disadvantage that only the best brains in the US can be sought, while the competition in the aerospace sector seeks the best brains in the world. In the meantime, the overclassification is criticized even by the US government. Overclassification of government secrets both undermines national security by blocking the intelligence community's ability to share critical information and erodes the basic trust that our citizens have in their government, according to the US Director of National Intelligence, Avril Haines. The only way I can explain it is that it's being used as an additional control tool. In the US, companies don't trust their employees, so there are thorough background checks, security clearances, and other tools. In Europe, many of these things would fail because of the data protection rules there. When Elon Musk publicly smoked a joint at Joe Rogan's podcast, the Pentagon immediately launched an investigation into his security clearance. So you have another tool to sanction unwelcome behavior, SLS. The SLS is NASA's new heavy lift rocket, which is being built by Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and other heavyweights in the US space industry. It's designed to carry the Orion spacecraft to the moon. However, the launch costs are astronomical, 
and are quoted at $4.1 billion. This is many times the cost SpaceX has with the Falcon Heavy or will have with the Starship. Again, there were difficulties and years of delays, which we'll cover in detail in another video. Conclusion Boeing desperately needs a culture change. Their shareholder value management is similarly unsuccessful to General Electric's approach. They need to go back to their engineering strengths. Mistakes can no longer be covered up, and government agencies and customers can only be met with honesty. They should also fill their management positions with people who actually understand something about the subject, regardless of their birthplace.